Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and I am giving a lecture on Introduction to Microprocessors. And I will be using, um, we'll be discussing PIC uh, 16F parts and 18F parts in this course. For this chapter, we'll just be discussing uh, 16F parts mostly. Um, we're going to be using the book called uh, Designing Embedded Systems with PIC Microcontrollers, Princi Principles and Applications, second edition by Tim Wilmshurst. Um, this chapter is chapter two, be introducing the PIC midrange family and the 16F84A. This chapter aims to introduce the PIC midrange family to talk about the overall tech architecture of the 16F84A, the memory, um, things like status register, SRAM, EEPROM, double EEPROM, program memory, stack, special function registers, uh, addressing, configuration word, oscillator, pipelining, power on reset, uh, reset, master clear, power up timing. This lecture will only cover the first two sections of the book, so let's let's get started. Okay, so in chapter 29 on, in the book, it shows a table of several different parts. Um, this list shown here is not exhaustive; it's not the exact one in the book. It only shows the first few, but the the first part we'll talk about is the 16F84A. Now. This is the chip we're going to start using in the class. Um, it's the reason we're using it is because it's one of the sim simplest chips. And uh, by using this simple chip, um, it's going to make it easier to learn. But everything you learn about this smaller, smaller microprocessor is directly applicable to the larger microprocessors, and it forms actually a part of it. So. The larger processors have uh, more peripherals, but the uh, everything else is the same. The, the The core of the processor is the same. Um, the fundamentals of how the stack work, how the RAM work, all that stuff is the same. The commands, the coding, is exactly the same. So we can learn off of the simpler part, so as not to overwhelm you. And then once we once we get finished learning about how the this simpler chip works, then we will um, go up to the more difficult parts, more advanced parts like the 16F, 87, uh, and 88, which simply just adds uh, other peripherals. <clears throat> so if we look here, the 16F, 84A has 18 pins, operates up to 20 megahertz, has 1K of program memory, 68 bytes of RAM and 64 bytes of EE PROM. So these are, represent the three different memory areas. It also has a one 8-bit timer, a 5-bit parallel port, and an 8-bit parallel port. It also has in-circuit in serial programming. That's what the ISP stands for, in-circuit serial programming. Okay, now when we go up to the LF part, 16 LF 84A, uh, everything is the same except the voltage has extended supply voltage range. Okay, and um, then when we move on to the 16 F 84A 4, it's the same but it has a different clock range. So the, the A 04 only goes up to 4 megahertz. Um, with this, when we go to the 16F87, then everything else is that the pins are the same, the clock speed is the same as the 84, uh, but we we quadruple the program memory, so now you're able to code a larger uh, assembly language code or C code, whatever you're using. Also, the number, the file register is also called RAM, has been increased significantly. To 368 bytes. Uh, also, the EEPROM size has 
quadruple, the 256 bytes. Okay. Also, we've added quite a few more peripherals and advanced technology. So notice that we have now two parallel ports. Um, we have, whereas before we had uh, one full parallel port and then a partial and other parallel port. Usually, you know, 8 bits is considered a full parallel port. So uh, we have two full, um, or we still have, actually we still have two parallel ports as before, but now we have three counter timers instead of one. We have two capture compare PWM modules, which before we had none. We have two serial communication modules, uh, which before, again, we had none. Two analog comparators, which in the 84, again, had none. It also has the nano, nanowatt technology, which is an improvement over the 84. We have a software selectable oscillator block, so we can select our oscillator in uh, software programming by using this code or similar, similar language code to select the oscillator block. So that's a big advantage. And again, we still have the in circuit serial programming. This just allows you to program the part through two pins, uh, clock and data, using your uh, your uh, USB module that connects to your computer. Uh, so it's a picket two or picket three or whatever whatever you're using. Um, then notice when you go to the 16F84 part, you still have 18 pins, you still have the 20 megahertz, memory is the same, but you add uh, these 10-bit uh, ADC channels. So you have seven 10-bit ADC channels. So, and those seven channels are muxed, so it's not actually seven individual, it's not seven analog to digital converters inside the chip, it's actually one analog to digital converter, but it's it's multiplex so that you can switch channels between pins. So now the book talks about several other different packages. It talks about the 873. Uh, I'm sorry, the 16F873, 16F876, 16F874, 16F877, uh, and even the 16F88X parts. And you can look at the book on pages 29 and 30 for those. <clears throat> also, um, here this slide is showing the pin connection diagram. Uh, the, notice that the first chip we looked at was a, a 12F part, which was in chapter 1. So if you go back to chapter 1 and compare that's on page 18. You'll be able to see that uh, the 12F508 part uh, only had eight pins, and many of those pins were had multifunction pins. So, the, so for example, the 12F508 on page 18 uh, had a it had a master clear, but it was shared with VPP and zero purpose GP3. So. Notice on this this part we have a dedicated master clear right here on pin one two three four pin four of the master clear um, so that's that's a nice feature also we have notice that we have um, a dedicated oscillator pins and clock pins whereas before these pins were shared with some other like uh, output pins, uh, input output pins. So that's a, that's a really nice feature to have so you don't have to use up your parallel port pins uh, for your clock or oscillator. Also notice on this chip that you have also we've added an interrupt pin, this INT, which we'll talk about interrupts later, but on uh, the RB0 through 7 is called port B. So this makes up port B, pins 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is, is considered port B. And then we have a port A, which is um, 17, 18, 1, 2, and pin 1, 2, and 3. That gives us uh, port A, so it's a 5-bit 
Um, then of course we have supply voltage VDD, and then we have ground VSS, and that makes up uh, pretty much all the pins. Okay. All right. So, and this chip is the 16F84A, by the way, um, which is going to be the first chip that uh, we talk about, and we're going to give some examples and, and some coding in the class. So now if we look at the block diagram for this 16F84A, uh, we can see that uh, it has basically the same features as the the 12F part that we saw in Chapter 1, but we've seen a few a few enhancements. We'll, we'll talk about those just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> first off, we went to a 13-bit uh, address bus. Whereas before we had a 12, so that's that's one of the first things we notice here. Also, if you look on page 20 and compare to the 12 F508 part, well, we only had uh, 512 k of memory, but here we have 1k of memory, so that that has been increased as well. Also, we've added an eight-level stack, whereas before we only had two. Okay. Also, we have um, <clears throat> added an EEPROM section. This is a uh, electronic, electronically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. That's what EEPROM stands for, and it's connected here to the data bus. So you can you can send a data word here from the data bus, and you can send a data address, and you can access your uh, EEPROM. This is data you can store to the chip that will will not go away when power is removed from the chip. Now, any data you have in the RAM will go away when the power is disconnected. Okay? So many times here in the EEPROM we may want to store messages like hello, uh, this is rocket sat C uh, program rocket or something like that or maybe your name or the, the name of your project. Um, whereas your your C code or your assembly language code is going to go in your flash memory here. Now this is non-volatile as well, which means this memory will be retained when you turn the power off. So the flash memory and the EEPROM memory will be remembered when power goes away uh, when you flip the off switch on, or, or when you flip the off switch. Uh, the only thing that's going to go away is your RAM. Okay, so this is the, the memory that goes away when you turn off power. This stores your, your C code or your assembly language code. This stores data. So we, we make a distinction between program code and data. Okay. Another thing to I want to highlight here is you have your uh, four bits of uh, I.O. ports. So this is called your port A, RA3 to RA0, that's four bits. And then we have um, RB0 to RB7, that's port B. Notice that the in, an, an external interrupt can be, uh, is multifunctioned with RB0. So the LSB of, R, of port, uh, port B is uh, shared with the interrupt uh, feature if you want. So this would be selected in your software. You have to select what feature you want inside of your software code, which would be configured up here. Uh, <clears throat> so I get last week we talked about master clear and uh, your power up, power on reset, and your oscillator, and all that stuff. So I'm not going to talk about that again. But I do want to highlight just one more time your W register. Your W register is your scratch pad register is sometimes called and it's the result of your uh, ALU so your ALU is your arithmetic logic unit which is the result of any addition, subtraction, and or whatever logic functions is going to be in the, the W register um, if you can imagine you, the result here in your W register you can't really there's more information that you may need other than just a result. For example, if you multi if you add two two numbers here, an eight bit number, another eight bit number, it is possible uh, that that number could overflow and 
that the values could in the W register could be incorrect. If you if you go back to binary addition, it's possible if you add, um, you know, it, for example, a number of uh, you know. 250 plus 100, well you would go above 256, so you're, you only have 8 bits in your W register, so your result in the W register may be incorrect. So we need to have a way of indicating whether or not you overflow your W register. So the way we do that is with uh, what's called a status register, and you can see that right here. So we want to talk a little bit about the status register today. Um, so your status register uh, looks like this it has 8 bits we want to talk about the first 3 bits um, that has tells you whether result in the in your W register is 0 or not so if your result is 0 then it's going to be indicated by this bit 0, 1, 2 so this bit bit Z it's called bit 2 it says the result of an arithmetic or logic operation is zero. So if that is set to a one, then you have uh, the W register is zero. Otherwise it would be, if this bit is set to a zero, it means well the result is not zero. <clears throat> and for bit one, which this is bit one, this is called a digit carry, and this means that a carry from the fourth low order bit of the result occurred. So I carry out from the fourth low order bit of the result. So that's talking about the fourth uh, low order bit is the fourth low order low order bit of the W register, okay? And then a, and then bit zero, which is the C bit here, is um, the carry borrow bit. That means that a carry out from the most significant bit of the result occur, occurred. So that would be like if you added two numbers that were too large for the W register. And if you added those numbers, then you would have a, a bit shift out of the the uh, most significant bit position, and the result would be incorrect. So you need to know that. So this C bit should be a one if that occurs. Okay. So these are called your con condition code flags, and it's called the status register. And again, the status register is located here in the block diagram. Okay. Also, just wanted to detail a little bit more about the block diagram notice that the, the in the flash memory the instruction word here uh, flows out here this is where the address comes into the flash memory and this is where the data comes out so this is a 14-bit instruction it comes into this instruction register and then uh, from the instruction register like we talked about last week you have um, you have a literal data that flows along this line. You have address information that flows along this line, gets muxed into your RAM registers. And then you have instruction information that flows into the decode register. Okay? So that is it for sections one and two uh, of the Wilm Schur's textbook. And this lecture will be continued in a, a next video series. Thank you.